Shalom. Kahalayla Yahweh. Bahashem. Yahweh Shai. Bahashem. Rukon Kadash. All praises be to the Most High. Yahweh. In the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior. Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, and double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles and great millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson, understanding biblical slang. We know that the Most High is a Jake because he speaks in poetry. He speaks in similitudes or symbolism. He speaks in analogies and metaphorically. And you can look some of these words up. So a metaphor is a, a, an example that's given based on real life. So it's spoken in a parable. For example, if I say that, if I say that on my job, I work for a flame-breathing dragon, it just simply means he's unmerciful, he's, he's austere, or he's basically unreasonable, can't reason with him, he's toxic, Okay doesn't necessarily mean that he's setting the damn office workplace on fire. I mean, this this is getting to be ridiculous that we got to go into these level of details, but got to do what we got to do. <clears throat> so the Bible is written in parables and similitudes. Sometimes it's literal, sometimes it's simply not. You're not going to go into the workplace and see them debris and little office fires all over the place because we got a flame-breathing dragon as a boss. And that's the Bible in a nutshell. Okay? A toxic leader that's causing the heat of frustration or confusion. See? I just spoke in a similitude. He's turning the heat up, so to speak. But he's doing it in a toxic way. A flame-breathing dragon is my boss. And we got to get out of this simplicity of the world. This man says that the chariots of the Lord are a bunch of wagons being pulled by horses. You got to be the dumbest man in the universe, hands down. So if there's a vote, you get my vote. On that ballot. This is ridiculous. <clears throat> so sometimes the chariots are literally talking about the ancient Egyptians coming out of Egypt and their military wagons being pulled by horses. But there are cases where it's talking about the chariots of the Lord. Matter of fact, let's just do this real quick. <clears throat> Do a simple search. Chariots of the Lord. Let's do it this way. I'm going to get right to it. Okay, there's a famous one. This is the most popular right here. Isaiah 66, verse 15. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. So these are not man-made chariots in the physical sense. These chariots 
are from the fourth dimension, the third heaven. Esau can't make this type of technology or generate this level of advanced technology. This technology is 1,000 years ahead of what we call today modern technology. <clears throat> well, that's a good image right here. My goodness gracious. I mean, this is getting to be ridiculous. Let's go to, I think it's Second Kings 2 and 11. Second Kings chapter 2. This is when Elijah was taken up into a chariot of the Lord. Second Kings 2 and 11. And it came to pass as they still went on and talked that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Now, don't let that horses of fire confuse you. I'm getting ready to show you why. Look at this. This is a symbol of the U.S. Army Cavalry. What do you see? Chariots of the U.S. Army Cavalry. They're called helicopters today. The ancient prophets did not speak in modern terminology. Only the simps are being baffled, confounded, or confused. See this? You're not going to see a bunch of horses on the modern day battlefield. Extremely lethal with laser beam technology and laser precision guided munitions. I mean, that's bugged out to think that. For the modern day battlefield, now why do they still use a horse? Because it's symbology. It's slang or hip talk. The U.S. Army Cavalry is one of the most lethal military forces or units on earth. It's comprised of Helicopter Apache attack gunships, transport helicopters, artillery, tanks, mechanized armor or mechanized infantry and light infantry. So it is a package of lethal warfare instruments or instruments of war. Notice the horse, but it doesn't mean a battlefield of attacking horses. That's bugged out. See, here's another image. So back in, I think, 1914 was the last time the U.S. military used horses on the battlefield. That's the start of World War I. Somewhere around 1914. After that, or shortly thereafter, these horses were phased out on the battlefield. But there's still horses in the U.S. the U.S. Army Old Guard. But they're not used in battle. See, look at this. This is the U.S. Army Cavalry. What are we looking at? They're chariots, which are their mechanized armored vehicles. They're their motorized artillery or mobile artillery, mechanized infantry, which it means they're armored. See, this is not that hard. Notice it says the cavalry or 14th cavalry, and this is their historical site. But this is not that difficult. There's their patch. So it's just a, a replica or a mascot, for lack of better words, for their military force. See, let's go here. Revelation 6, verse 2. And I saw, and behold, a white horse, and he 
that sat on him had a bowl and a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. So that crown represents victory over the nations. He's going to conquer the ruling establishment, the authority under Edom and all their kingdoms. So he's not going to literally be on a horse. Let's go back to the patch. But he's coming in the force of horsepower. The horse represents power, authority. Matter of fact, let's get another image. Theodore Roosevelt, um, National Museum. They took down this statue, by the way. Right here. Let's go to this statue. See? So this is Theodore Roosevelt. Northern Kingdom. The so-called North American Indians. So-called Puerto Ricans, Dominion, Dominicans. And Southern Kingdom. Judah, Benjamin, Levi. And the so-called... West Indians. So he is on a horse, which represents power. So Esau puts himself up as the savior, as the most high. He is on the proverbial power seat or power seat or the proverbial high horse. So we speak in simil uh, similitudes. So he is on the proverbial high horse or in the power seat. <clears throat> Northern kingdom, Gad. Southern kingdom, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. And northern kingdom, Puerto Ricans, Dominicans. The North American Indians. The Reubenites. Reuben, Simeon. So this is symbolism. <clears throat> How we get out of here? Okay, let's go back. See? That was at the New York National Museum of History. Now let's go here. <clears throat> Revelations 19, verse 14. And the armies which were in heaven follow him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. The host of heaven simply means the armies from the fourth dimension the third heaven, not little green men from Mars. So the Lord is coming with his armies clothed in fine linen. And these chariots of the Lord that Yahweh Shai is coming with, they're the most decked out. Royal, silver, and gold. Let's get that. <coughs> Let's go to Psalms 68. Maybe it's 17. It's right here. See? Psalm 68, verse 17. The chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of angels. The Lord is among them, as in Sinai, in the holy place. See? It's not little green men from Mars. Esau, Edom, blasphemed the angels. That's in Revelations 13. They're not little Edomite babies wearing diapers with a big damn clothespin fastened together. That's bugged out. <coughs> Let's get that silver and gold. Where's that at? Silver and gold. Maybe it's up. Right here. Psalm 68. Let's go to verse 12. Kings of armies did flee a space, and she that tarried at home divided the spoil. 
Though ye have lean among the pots, yet shall ye be as the wings of a dove covered with silver and her feathers with yellow gold. So these chariots of Yahweh Shai are decked out. They're not horses that are going to be flying like Pegasus, a horse with two wings. That's from Hollywood. That's another bugged out doctrine from Esau. So this is not what we're going to see here. I mean, we got to set the record straight. This is from Greek mythology. This is not what we're going to see. I mean, look at this. This is ridiculous. Let's go to images. Esau has deceived the whole world. Devil means deceiver, slanderer, or false accuser. So we're not going to see this. Look at Esau on here, looking like a savior. This is bugged out. The Bible is describing transport vessels, chariots. <coughs> My goodness gracious. To be this bugged out is scary. Psalm 68, verse 13. Though ye have lean among the pots, yet shall ye be as the wings of a dove covered with silver and her feathers with yellow gold. So this is um, the Israelites that are going to be delivered in style, taken up into the chariots of the Lord. Let's go to, I want to go to Isaiah 60. Maybe I can go right to it. Let's do it like this. We'll go to Isaiah. I'm trying to remember where it's at. Isaiah 60. One moment. Right here. Isaiah 60, verse 8. Who are these that fly as a cloud? and as the doves to their windows. So this kingdom is going to be built up high, and the Israelites are going to be traveling in these aerial uh, chariots, the so-called UFOs. So the technology that we're going to see in the kingdom of Jacob is going to far exceed what we know today. So these transport vessels are going to become a common occurrence. Who are these that fly as a cloud and as the doves to their windows? This is how the Israelites are going to be getting around. Let's go here. I think it's Psalms maybe 55. <clears throat> Psalms 55, verse 6. And I said, Oh, that I had wings like a dove, for then would I fly away and be at rest. This is coming in the kingdom. Rest. And being able to travel on these ships, the chariots of the Lord. <clears throat> Let's go back. Isaiah 60, verse 8. Who are these that fly as a cloud and as the doves to their windows that fly as a cloud? Through thy precepts, I get understanding. Look at Psalms 104, verse 3. Who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters? Who maketh the clouds his chariot? Who walketh upon the wings of the wind? So these are mobile transport vessels from the fourth dimension, the third heaven. There's another image. This is not talking about Pharaoh's chariots. Damn horse wagons from the wild, wild west. Ronald Dalton is bugged out.
bugged out. And he should not be teaching. He's not a man of the Lord, and he does not have the Holy Spirit. Let's go to this video of Elder Yashawamba. 1 Samuel 8 and 11, and he said, This will be the manner of the king that shall reign over you. He will take your sons and appoint them for himself and for his chariots. Same thing Solomon did. Remember Solomon was ruling and he put particular Israelites over his chariots because he had so many. That wasn't talking about flying saucers, my man. That wasn't talking about the angels. That was talking about actual earthly chariots. Okay, and to be his horsemen and they show uh, uh, some shall run before his chariots. I had to do a lesson on this. You can't be this stupid, man. Yes, he can. This is how a king will reign over you, Samuel said. The king will draft your sons and will assign them to his chariots and to his charioteers, making them run before his chariots. Listen to some of these Israelites make you lose faith in humanity. Ronald Dalton is bugged out and really shouldn't even be speaking. I mean, this is ridiculous. This nigga think, thinking that just because it says chariot, we think that it's a flying UFO ship. No, this is talking about an earthly chariot. Stop, man. Mm, 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 mm. And we're going to show you that the, 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 the scriptures separate the two. You have the chariots of salvation and you have the, the, uh, uh, an earthly chariot. A car can be likened unto a chariot. But back then, what did they have? The horse and carriage, the horse and chariot. Okay, a chariot. Okay, a, a vehicle, basically. You go into the, the root word. All right, marakab, chariot, a place to ride, riding seat, chariot, seat of litter, a saddle. All right, then you have rakab, <laughs> to mount, to ride. Okay, and that's what, back in the day, they had the horse and, and chariot. Point blank, period. Let's keep reading this comment. Exodus 14. So Pharaoh prepared his chariot UFO ship and took his army with him. He took 600 of the best UFO ships mm. and all the other mm. chariot mm. Mm. UFO mm. ships of Egypt with officers of them all over them all. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, so that he pursued the Israelites who were marching out def defiantly. So here's it. Let's listen to him. It says, so the Exodus story now means that 600 UFO ships were flying after the Israelites when they crossed the Nile River or the Red Sea, whatever you believe. How did the water swallow up and drown the Egyptian armies if they were flying in the sky? Mm, 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 Please, mm. brother, use your brain, not the brain of the YouTube Israelite teacher. You see how stupid... This gospel and what the Ronald Dalton just moved the bar on stupidity, the height of being a reprobate. See, these people, they're not really like human people. They are like they're animals, beasts. The Bible says they're made to be taken and destroyed. I, mean, I don't even see them as people. And I'm going to leave that right there. Because what I'll say next will probably scare you. These people just need to be quiet. Those are the Egyptian chariots. There's a difference between the Egyptian chariots and the chariots of the Lord from the fourth dimension. I mean, these people are beyond stupid. They move the bar of the standards of stupidity. How can you be that dumb? Lord, have mercy. So when you read Psalms 104, these, these are aerial transport vessels. It's not talking about the Egyptian chariots. There's a distinction between what's man-made and what's from the fourth dimension. Let's look at this word chariot. Why you think Esau put this man on mainstream? Because he knew that this man was bugged out. That's why Esau put him on mainstream.
but they take down our videos and go into this word chariot. Probably the same thing. Merkaba, if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> Strong's H seventy three ninety eight. Rechuv, Rechuv. Sound like Esau saying raccoon. Bugged out. So Merkaba transport vessels. Let's see what else we got here. So this is a deception. All the twelve tribes are in Africa. They're African. You see, this is a massive deceptive campaign. Over 2 billion sales or hits on the internet that the Edomites are Japhetic. That's a lie. How can the Edomites be Japhetic when they come out of the loins of Abraham and Isaac? How can they be Japhetic? Abraham, Isaac, they're Shemitic. So the Edomites are not Japhetic. That's a deception. All 12 tribes are not so-called African Negro. That's a bogged out doctrine. What else? Oh, the chariots of the Lord are different from what's man-made here on earth. Like Esau's, let's go back to the image. See, these are the chariots of the modern day Egyptian or Pharaoh, spoken of in Romans chapter 9, the Edomites. Let's go back to the other image. See, so these are the chariots of Esau Edom. Edom. And when you read Revelations chapter 12, it says Satan and his angels. Those are their aircraft. Let's go back to that. See? Now, some of their, their aircraft, they'll use what's called fixed wing aircraft, which look like regular airplanes. And they, they'll have close air support from the Air Force. These are what we call jets. But they're what? They're transport vessels. So the ancient prophets would have called them what? Chariots. This is not hard. It's not, it's not hard at all. I'll go ahead and finish and close out there. So this man is causing massive chaos and confusion and deception and sowing seeds of doubt. But the elect is not going to be deceived by this man, Ronald Dalton. The elect cannot be deceived or misled. Now, it might happen temporarily, but the elect will bend but not break. You can bend the elect, but you can't break the elect. This has got to be one of the most ridiculous Narratives that I've seen. Unbelievable. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh, Ahashem, Yahweh Shai, Ahashem, or Kwakadash. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Kwam Yasharala. And by the by, we got next, Lord willing. Shalom.